The Nissan GQ Patrol is one of the toughest tourers and weekend warriors you will find. They're hugely popular in Australia, well sought after, and they're fantastic off-road toys. But we've found 10 issues that you can easily fix and upgrade. And to find out just what those are, we're pulling in Aaron from Patrol Apart and Navarra Apart to tell us how to make this Nissan even tougher. Now whilst these are our top 10 tips from the expert on how to upgrade the Nissan Patrol, if you've got something else to help the old kettle get even better, whack it in the comments below, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks Simon. Funny you mentioned the kettle. The uh, TD42 is one of the most iconic engines that Nissan have ever made and unfortunately the cooling system is the one thing that lets them down and that's number one on my hit list. Let's take a look. The TD42 is a big cast iron six cylinder engine with a reasonably small radiator at the front here. And what four wheel drivers love to do is stick a bull bar winch, driving lights, sometimes an intercooler up here in front and blocks all that cold air running through the radiator, which exacerbates the problem that the engine has with trying to keep cool. Some of the ways you can overcome the problem is by firstly, removing some of the junk in front of the grill and trying to increase the amount of airflow running through the radiator. Secondly, is making sure you've got a good quality, clean radiator in the car. That might be a genuine one, or it might be a really good quality aftermarket one. Try and steer clear of the cheaper quality ones as they just don't tend to get the flow of water and the flow of air required through the fins. The next thing you can look at is the water pump. The water pump when it's factory has quite a big gap between the impeller and the back of the timing cover and this creates cavitation. That creates poor water flow and over time it actually erodes away the back of the timing cover and exacerbates the problem of the cavitation because there's even bigger gap for the air to get in there. First thing to do is take the water pump off and have a look at what you're dealing with. If you've got a good timing cover, put a genuine or, a, or an aftermarket good quality water pump back on and away you go. If your timing cover is corroded, depending on how bad it is, you may need to either get it repaired or put a new one on. Lastly, the fan and the, and the hub is a good upgrade. There's many options on the market, ranging from aftermarket blades, uh, extra fluid that you can put in your viscous hub, all the way up to the likes of a UFI fan and hub assembly, which drastically increases the amount of air flowing through the radiator. The second thing on my list is the front drive line. The front brakes leave a lot to be desired, particularly when you've got big rubber on them. They don't like stopping on the road. The front CVs are a little bit weak and when you've got big tyres on them and a front div lock in the bush, they do not have a good time. The steering boxes fall into the same category and can tend to break when you're giving them a hard time in the bush. The best solution that I like to use to fix this problem is to fit a front diff housing out of a GU Nissan Patrol. The brakes are much bigger. They've got twin piston front calipers. The CVs are nearly twice the size and the steering box has a significantly upgraded internals. The next upgrade that people do when they're fitting a GU front diff housing is they normally put a front locker in at the same time. That can give the GU CVs some more grief and there are upgrade options above that. Josh here, he's got an e-locker in the front, factory GU, CVs and uh, he hasn't broken it yet. I'm jumping for joy! Front steering arms in the Patrol aren't the strongest from factory and in Nissan's wisdom they didn't put adjustable or replaceable tie rod ends on most of their arms. A really common upgrade that I like to do is to fit a heavy duty steering arm with either a good quality aftermarket or a genuine tie rod end. This means you can adjust the arm to the right length for the, for the lift that the car's got and you've got much less risk of bending or breaking them in the bush. Hot tip on the GU front axle upgrade. The steering box has a different taper on it to a GQ. And if you don't do the combo of the steering box and the axle housing and the GU steering arm or tie rod combination, it is a deadly setup. Make sure that you've got the right information and you're putting the right products in the car. 
Moving to the back of the car, number three on my list is the rear trailing arms. Nissan made these out of quite a light duty material from factory and they tend to bend when you give them a bit of a nudge in the bush, particularly in these off-road rigs. They got lots of weight in them, lots of travel in the suspension, big tires, you, know, you drop into a rut and, and nick the arm on a rock or just load it up on an embankment and they just, they just give way. One of the most common upgrades that I recommend to people is to fit a pair of heavy duty lower control arms. Heaps of options on the market, but beware that a lot of them are not ADR compliant and not recommended for road use. Anyone who knows anything about the Nissan Patrol GQ and GU knows that the rear spring towers are a little bit likely to crack off, particularly when you've got a lot of weight in the car, heavy spring or an airbag in the spring. The spring towers tend to crack, they can tear off the chassis, can do heaps and heaps of damage if it's left unfixed. There's quite a few solutions on the market to get around it. My personal preference is the Boss Coil Tower Kit that slides up inside the coil tower. It spreads the load of the spring better, it strengthens the sidewall of the chassis, and it protects the underside of the chassis where the bump stop bolts to, and helps to spread the load and stop the chassis from ballooning out as the car compresses onto the bump stops. Another option is the plate that braces the two towers together. This stops the towers from tearing apart, which stops them from tearing off the chassis. The only downside with this option is whilst it's a lot more cost effective, it doesn't offer any strength or support to the bump stops and the chassis itself. It's an easy thing for you to check out yourself. Have a look around the coil towers, look for any cracking, look for any stress marks along the bottom edge of the chassis where the bump stops bolt up and down the edges of the coil tower and then look around the top of the coil tower and look for cracks. Next on my list is the front bump stops. So many times I see cars come through the shop or out on the tracks and they're missing half the bump stop. And most people don't even realize it's missing because when it breaks, the bottom half falls off completely and it's not even there for them to realize it's broken. Great example is Josh's car here, has the bottom half of the bump stop missing. There should be another inch and a half of bump stop on the bottom there. The problem with this is it allows the diff to compress up too far and the shock absorbers will more than likely bottom out. This does heaps of damage and can ruin products that you've spent good money putting into your truck. There's quite a few options on the market. You can put a genuine replacement in, you can put an aftermarket version of the genuine in, or you can put an upgraded unit, which is longer and stronger. So you get a more progressive rate of bump as you come down onto the bump stop. While I'm here, let's talk about front hubs. So many options on the market and so many people come unstuck in the bush with a broken hub. Whoa! Already? We're done. As you can see here, we've just exploded the front freewheeling hub there. I didn't want to punish it too hard because the fear was that happening. Um, yeah, first time I gave it a little bit. She's all over. Unfortunately, when they break, you lose all drive at the front end. So that can really leave you stranded and in a bad spot. My preference is to use a genuine hub. They seem to be the strongest proprietary available product you can put on the car. So that's, the, that's an old factory Nissan hub. That's an aftermarket one. And a really good thing that you can add to them is these hub saver rings. These are steel where the actual housing of the hub is aluminium and under extreme load, particularly if you've got a front diff lock, the aluminium can tend to stretch and it'll, it'll crack and break and, and then you lose drive to the front. Putting these steel rings on doesn't completely fix the problem, but it makes a huge difference to, to holding the hub together and, and stopping it from breaking. As these cars are getting older, things are starting to wear out on them. Engine mounts and gearbox mounts are something that are a real big ticket on my hit list. You can start to notice them by hearing bonks or, or feeling the engine move around in the car. The gear stick might be wobbling more than normal or the car might just have a vibration that it didn't used to have sitting there at idle and you're trying to figure out what it is. There's heaps of options on the market for genuine aftermarket or upgraded engine mounts depending on how serious you're using the car off-road. The problem with the upgraded mounts that are, that are a lot more solidly mounted and don't allow the mount to tear apart is they often make the car a lot harsher and a lot more vibration through the vehicle. What's really common 
is the left hand side is the mount that normally breaks because that's the torque side of the engine you know as you're climbing up a rock ledge or giving the car a bit of grief the engine's trying to torque away and the left hand mount is the one that would normally break so we'll often fit a heavy duty race bread engine mount to the left hand side and we'll leave the factory one on the right hand side and that just dampens that vibration and doesn't make it too uncomfortable whilst making it heaps stronger and more robust Whilst we're in the engine bay, let's talk about performance because these TD42GQs in the naturally aspirated sense leave a lot to be desired. Josh's truck here has, a, has an old school Luxons turbo kit on it. They go back years and years and have been one of the market leaders in turbochargers and performance. There's heaps of options on the market now. The legalities of it are pretty hard to skirt around and, and there's lots of hoops to jump through but a super common upgrade on a, on a TD42 GQ is to fit a turbocharger, three inch exhaust, high flow air box, and actually get the thing to perform. If you're lucky enough to have a GU, it's more than likely a factory turbo, and that's a significant upgrade on what the GQ came out with. There are plenty of options still to upgrade your GU and get more performance, better economy, and make it nicer to drive and just all around smoother in the bush. Let's talk about the rear drive line of the Patrol. The Patrol has been known throughout the years for having a bulletproof drive line. But as the tracks get tougher, the tyres get bigger, and the cars get older, I'm starting to see more and more failures of the rear diff. It's really common now for the crown wheel and the pinion. They just simply get tired, they wear out, and they fall to pieces, and that loses all drive in the rear end. Got a couple of options with fixing that. Some people just like to rebuild it and put a new crown wheel and pinion, new bearings, new seals, and put it back together. Another really common upgrade is to rebuild it with a new gear set, new bearings, new seals, and put a diff lock in there at the same time. That really complements the front diff lock if you've fitted one of them, and can make the car heaps more capable in the bush. Number 10 is related to the wear and the age of the vehicle. Uh, a couple of things that I'm really starting to see is common now and something to look out for if you're in the market to buy one. We see the roof rails starting to rust out. Unfortunately, just, just repairing it and bogging it up doesn't fix it. The rust keeps spreading underneath and it's really, it's, it's, it's a big job to fix. Very fixable, heaps of people do it, cutting panels out, welding new panels in, but definitely something to keep an eye on. Uh, if yours starts to show signs, you know, you want to get it fixed straight away before it becomes a big issue. And if you're looking to buy one, make sure you look really closely at the roof, all down the gutters, and just make sure that something, uh, something dodgy hasn't been done on the car you're going to buy. Front door hinges are getting pretty old on these now, and you know, we're seeing them get really loose and really worn out. Makes the door sloppy to shut. Sometimes it sort of drops down and then doesn't want to close properly. A simple way to test whether your door hinge is worn out or not, it's with the door open, just grab the door and try and lift it. Josh's ones here are actually pretty tight, so he must have had them replaced at some point in the car's life. Lastly, the seat belts are getting pretty tight in these cars. It's common for them to get shut in the door, uh, get, you know, chafe on your clothes, your zips, and they just get worn out. You can see on Josh's here, it's, it's not too bad, but it's starting to fray. And as they get old and they get dirty, they start to get gunk in them and they get really firm and they don't want to retract. First thing you can try, you know, if it's not too bad, you can give it a bit of a tidy up and clean it and that'll maybe help it retract. Uh, otherwise, the best option is to put a new unit in and make sure that the seat belt is working properly. It's obviously a key item in the safety part of the vehicle. Thanks for tuning in guys. Hopefully I've been able to help you with some of your patrol problems. It's been a while since I've been out in the bush in a GQ, so uh, I'm gonna head out with Josh and see if we can break it. Well that's it, the guys at Patrol Apart and Navarra Apart have got you covered no matter what sort of Nissan you've got. But if you're after a GQ, you can make it even tougher, go out and hit harder tracks and take it even further. So guys, get off road, get a four wheel drive, have some fun and do it safely. Now that's entertainment, holy hell. 
sweet.